Hey guys, Victor here, and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different, and I actually want to do a discussion today because, um, in case you may or may not have known, the recent Forbidden and Limited list for Nationals format has finally been released. So, uh, I just want to pretty much just give my thoughts on, you know, talk about what was actually, you know, effectively nerfed, if Index were actually hit properly, uh, what can you expect for, you know, our Nationals format, and, you know, things of that nature. So, with that out of the way, let's just jump straight into the discussion. So we're going to start with the elephant in the room and just talk about, you know, the obvious biggest loser. <laughs> and that just unfortunately or fortunately, depending on your point of view, happens to be Super Heavy Samurai. So Super Heavy Samurai lost Scarecrow, which is their Link 1, and they lost Cyberstein. So the Cyberstein bans whatever because it was basically just used to bring out like degenerate monsters like Materia Exterior to be able to have multiple negates for your opponent's cards. But the Link 1 loss of Scarecrow is actually huge because... That was going to be pretty much your only way or your consistent way of having to you know get access to soul piercer and then soul piercer link one search you bring back your soul piercer link again and then you know just continue and gaining advantage gaining advantage throughout the game non-stop but uh yeah it's it's not easy anymore <laughs> you're gonna actually have to work if you want to have to be able to like search for your deck and even cards like almirage right they're not effective then you can't use them because uh soul piercer has 1200 attack and something like almirage requires the monster to have a thousand or less so yeah if there's a deck that's pure copium right now uh it's definitely super heavy samurai i would definitely just not recommend playing this because it's pretty much just dead in the water uh then after that i want to talk about pearly for a little bit so their delicious memory which is one of their quick play spells was actually just limited right and that's pretty huge because they mainly use delicious memory in order to you know be able to special summon plump and then plump will in turn give you access to your uh, x pearly nor pretty easily by having it be set up with like multiple you know uh multiple materials so that it's unaffected it can bounce multiple cards you know things of that nature but uh as of right now without that because we, we just cannot consistently search it as it's at one so if you have pearlily which is the black cat um uh, which reveals three you only have a 33% chance of that being able to add it to your hand. And if you try to rely on, you know, just the original Pearly, uh, <laughs> it only reveals the top three cards of your deck. So I just, yeah, it's it's not going to happen. The deck, it pretty much entirely revolves around E-Pearly Happiness at the moment. as It's going to be like the only one that you can summon off, you know, by targeting like a quick play spell. At least until um, E-Pearly Noir comes out. Uh, once you get e pearly noir in like the future sets then you're gonna be able to play this deck once again and be able to you know just turbo out x pearly noir but until then um it's still a decent deck but i don't know if it's like i'd recommend it for nationals format i think there's still just a bunch of much better decks than this uh then uh after that i want to talk about math mech actually uh, unfortunately apparently i don't own any math mech cards outside of this one so uh this is going to be my representation for math mech and uh, that deck lost circular to one, so I'm kind of like 50-50 on if it's like really bad or if it's really good. Mainly because, um, yeah, the consistency that uh, the circular offered you, just it's pretty much just thrown out the window. Because you only have access to one, but Math Mech is still a really consistent deck because they still have three sign at mining and um, countless other cards that are just able to search it out. But if you don't get access to it, uh, you're just not going to win the game straight up. If you don't have circular, you're not winning. <laughs> um, but like I said, it's not terrible because it's still a uh, you know a cyber stack, and if it's a cyber stack, that means you can still get update jammered access code integrated whatever all that nonsense. So if you want to play it, it's okay. But um, yeah, I just I don't really think it's all that great, especially with the fact that bestials are starting to return back into the format. But who knows if people stop playing mathmic, maybe people will stop playing bestials. But until then, yeah, it's it's all right, but it's not the worst. Uh, then, after that, I actually want to talk about Kashtira. So, Kashtira is weird, right? Obviously, it got number 89 banned, which means they're no longer going to be able to rip apart your extra deck and banish, like, half your deck face down. And that's actually huge, because uh, there's a lot of decks and a lot of people that are playing multiple copies of a card purely because uh, Kashtira was able to, you know, just banish that one key card. Take, like, uh, uh, Mathmic, for example, right? A lot of players were playing multiple access codes just because of the fact that cash tier will be able to banish one and if they banish the one then you have no way to otk them but we no longer have to worry about that threat instead what cash tier is what i'm planning on like it becoming is basically protect the castle be so 
it's just going to be like a rice heart pass every time now you no longer have to worry about getting your zones locked or anything like that there it's literally just going to be a rice heart pass so uh it's going to be a lot more easy to prepare for because that just means kaijus are 100 percent going to be effective against their end boards now and um yeah, it's just, it's still a really good deck, don't get me wrong. If that deck goes first and you don't have the Kaiju, you're probably not going to win the deck because Macro on legs just completely stuffs so many decks, even in this current format. But um, yeah, it's it's still a really solid deck. It's just, like I said, it's going to be more Protect the Castle. And I think they may actually shift to like a, a more trap-heavy based or rely on like more degenerate cards. So you're probably going to see Dimension Shifter return to the main deck a lot more frequently. And I could even see something like Dimensional Fissure, for example, being being like, you know, uh making it into the main deck just because it's help it's going to be able to help you uh in those situations where you're not going to be able to make a rise heart pass even though it's you know those are few and far in between but yeah uh still a really good deck and i definitely think it's still a contender for being able to win nationals uh then after that i want to talk about nachuria's so nachuria just lost their sacred tree which is the trap that whenever it's sent to the graveyard it searches which you know it's okay but that's whatever <laughs> uh that deck was already falling out of favor so i'm not really sure why they hit it there if anything they should have hit like the mat or the runic or the uh ashizu stuff just because i know some of them don't play the ashizu cards either but just being able to mill five and just you know fill up your entire graver with like nocheria crickets and all that nonsense is pretty ignorant but they should have 100 percent been more harsh on runic just because i don't know i feel like that just pushes the deck over the top because it gives you like infinite basically infinite draws as you're constantly drawing three cards after you use your runic spells you're banishing your opponent's deck just you know all that different jazz but the nurturia version itself yeah th that's pretty much gone because the sacred tree was their main form of consistency and just with one um it becomes a lot more fragile so yeah i definitely would not recommend playing the nurturia variant of runic anyways but yeah that's it with that and then uh i actually want to focus on some hand traps for the first part or for the final portion of this so we're going to talk about cyphering gear gamma um so gamma got put to one which means that it's not worth playing unless you're a cheater because then you're gonna be able to stack you know the gamma to the top of your deck <laughs> and um but if you're not like a cheater then i would not recommend playing this card because you're not gonna draw it but on the bright side, since we're not playing Gamma anymore, that means you're not going to be able to draw Cypherim Driver. So you basically just boosted the consistency of your deck indirectly. <laughs> um, but I don't know if I really like or hate this because, yeah, I hate Gamma as a card because it breaks sometimes. But uh, there's so many degenerate cards in this format that Gamma helped you stop, like Draw Lockbird and Shifter and... Yeah, but with one, those cards are pretty much just free to rain, or you better open up your one-off copy of Call by the Grave, because if not, uh, you're just going to get destroyed. And then, speaking of Drone Lockbird, I wanted to put Drone Lockbird in the loser category. I know this is going to sound weird, but the main reason people were playing Drone Lockbird was because of Super Heavy Samurai. And with Super Heavy Samurai basically not existing, I, uh, I don't really see a reason to be including Drone Lockbird, at least not in the main. I think it's still a fantastic side card, but... When it comes to like the top tier decks outside of Super Heavy Samurai, a lot of them can play through it. So take like Pearly and Kashtira, for example, right? If Kashtira starts Dimension Shifter, uh, Droll's useless. Or if Kashtira starts with um, any of their monsters, whether it's like Fenrir or Unicorn, Droll is also, while it's not completely terrible, it's not very effective either because they're typically going to have like the, if they have the Unicorn out, they're going to rip apart your extra deck. And you know, just things like that of, of that nature means that this card is a lot less effective it's mainly just for you know beating up rogue decks if i'm being honest so yeah that's just something to consider i i think droll may definitely fall out of favor and we're going to see the rise of other hand traps again just like ash blossom being included in every single deck and you know just cards of that type but um yeah with that i feel like that's pretty much all the the, the forbidden and limitless impacted negatively so let's just move on to the positives or like the decks that actually you know made out like a bandit <laughs> and um yeah so i'll catch you guys in a bit all right so i wanted to kick off this section which is pretty much like a decks or cards individually that you should be on the lookout or like anticipate to actually become good with uh punk and dark world or gold pride if you want to like combine it with that which you typically typically do and the reason for that is uh if droll does end up falling out of you know like the main deck these two decks just completely thrive just because dark world you know if it gets drolled the turn ends and the same applies to punk slash gold pride and you know things of that nature 
But on top of that, if you lose the die roll to either of these decks, they set up enormous boards that are incredibly hard to bait to break. And in Dark World's case, you're getting hand looped 100%. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. So uh, yeah, I just wanted to put these decks like on everyone's radar just in case, you know, because the situation will come up where you play against one of these. And if you don't have draw, at least in your side, you're going to have a rough time if you lose the die roll. And if you're anything like me, who pretty much like, you know, I almost never win the die roll, unfortunately. So you can definitely expect seeing me siding draw and lock for just for decks like these alone. And um, after that, uh, I want to talk about Labyrinth really quick. So Labyrinth is really cool because it has two different ways you can play it. So you can do the floodgate heavy version, which, you know, just set five and then play your game that way. Or you can play the furniture variant, which is kind of cool because it's like a it's like a combo deck, but not really. Um, it sets up like a big board of like big beaters and then it backs it up by setting like cards such as like Eradicator Epidemic Virus and things of that nature. And um yeah, I think there's just like a lot of potential and this deck is straight up just getting disrespected. <laughs> and you can see that in like the current format, right? Because you have all these nationals happening all around the world and decks like Labyrinth are still performing because people have just stopped caring about the deck and they're letting it do pretty much as they please. So um much like Dark World and like Punk, uh you should pretty much have this deck like in the back of your mind just to be, you know, so you don't get caught with like your pants down or anything like that. Because it is scary when it's able to pop off. And then after that i want to talk about runic and sprite really quick also so runic sprite their field spell for a runic fountain got put to two and when it came, comes to sprite starter got put to two and i'm going to be honest those hits literally don't matter especially when it comes to fountain because the only deck that i think was actively playing three was the uh Nuturia version but uh most decks even like pure or unless you were playing pure runic uh, only play two fountain just because you know you don't want to clog with too many of them and um when it comes to sprite losing one starter yeah it sucks but it's not the end of the world because any two cards or any two monsters is still full combo um and even then like uh prior to this format runic live twin was like a really strong deck and it's still or runic live twin Lun runic sprite live twin runic sprite you know any of those three like variants or whatever or just all these different sprite variants even like plunder control right uh they're still really really strong and if draw and lock favor draw and lock bird falls out of the format um they just get stronger and even then like uh the live twin sprite version right if you get drawled with that deck you honestly don't even care half the time because you're still setting up like a big board it's pretty much only like the plunder versions that care about getting hit by droll so um this deck is still very scary and I could very easily see it be like the best deck of the format with especially with like the hits to Kestira because it's able to effectively you know um choose how to handle it so if they want to play like Kaijus, Santa Claus, uh even something like Xyz Encore right you just detach all the materials from Arise Heart and then send it back to the grave and then they don't get the materials back because the materials were banished so there, there's a lot of ways to counter Kashtira now, and I think this deck is going to be one of like the main benefits from it, or see the main benefits from it. So yeah, it's just a really good deck. And then uh, after that, uh, I'm going to lump in Sword Soul and um, Branded together, just because um, I don't know if you guys noticed, but all the decks from last year's Nationals, they pretty much didn't get hit. Whether it's the Adventure Engine, the uh, Branded, Sword Soul, nothing happened to them. If anything, they just got buffed. <laughs> uh, and like the case of the Adventure Piles and Sword Soul, they just got Denglong back. And uh, I don't know if it's going to have like an immediate effect or if they're even going to be bothering playing it, but you can't discount the fact that Denglong basically just becomes a free negate and then it floats on top of that. So that's always something to be uh, weary of, especially in the case of like Sword Soul, right? Because this turn one that they set up is always really strong. And if they're able to back it up with a consistent counter trap um yeah things might get really bad really fast if you lose the die roll to this deck and then branded is branded yeah if you ash the branded fusion a lot of the times you just straight up end their turn and win the game but uh even with like branded expulsion band thanks to the new albion fusion that was recently released uh they don't even need branded expulsion they can still give you a gimmick puppet nightmare or raw disciple or just anything of that nature it's just uh it's a little bit more fragile just because you know it's a monster so if you play cards like Call by the Grave or Super Poly, things of that nature, uh, you should be able to add it pretty easily. But um, yeah, I, I would not discount it because these decks have only gotten better since last year and um, they're still very competent.
And then for the final card that I want to talk about, or the final deck, uh, you can't go about it without talking about Sky Striker, right? Engage got put to two, Multi Roll got put to three. Uh, it's pretty clear what deck is Konami's favorite. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> uh, they just love Sky Striker, and I, I bet they just wish that they had never hit it in the first place. Um, and it's still a really solid deck because, let me, let's face it, uh, four hand traps plus any starter, whether it's like Ray, Rhoda, uh, Ray, Rhoda, Rose, Engage, Drones is basically full combo and they can do whatever they want at that point. So I don't think it's going to be the greatest deck, but it's still going to be something that's going to be around because there are a lot of Sky Striker enthusiasts and faithful for, for, faithful for this deck. So uh, just keep that in mind. And then as of right now, it's like, it's okay. I know you're going to get sacked by double engage, right? They're going to go engage, search a spell, draw, activate engage, search another spell, draw. And then you're going to be like, oh God, what's happening? <laughs> because they're just quickly out resourcing you. But um, yeah, it's okay for now. But we, we know that since this is Konami's favorite, they're going to release more support in the future and it's going to be broken as it always is. So with that, those are my thoughts on the Forbidden and Limited list. If you guys enjoyed this, please let me know because I definitely want to do more type of content like this. So uh, just feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time. All right, see ya.